The first one being to try to understand the prospect and understand why are they giving you objections. I think trying to understand your opponent or the, the person you're interacting with is, is a good place to start really in any situation, especially re relationships. And if you think of the prospect and the salesperson being a relationship, you know, it, it definitely applies there, but you could apply this to your children, to your spouse, to uh, a negotiation, whatever. But let's start with trying to understand the prospect. They give you objections, sometimes not really because they truly believe the objection they're, they're telling you. They, they're giving you the objection to get rid of you. And they're, one of the reasons why they're trying to get rid of you is because they, they sense that you're a salesperson. And, and you're going to try to start to sell to them because that's what salespeople do. And, and they don't feel like being sold to, maybe because they're working or because sometimes just a, a salesperson trying to sell to you is kind of annoying. So they don't want to be sold to so that they start to put their guard up. And, and they also might genuinely, uh, if we look at it optimistically and say that they're not getting annoyed and, it, and, and it's not that, they might genuinely, if they're genuinely hearing you out, they might not think that they need what you sell. Uh, you know, we'll talk a little bit about pain here in the in a minute, and that people, you know, people sometimes buy stuff to resolve pain or avoid pain. Well, you know, sometimes we have pain that that we don't know exists, and that's called latent pain. Uh, so, not to get into too much detail about the concept of pain, but maybe they just don't know that they need what you have, and when they say I'm not interested, it's because they think they don't genuinely need it. So. That's one reason why they might be delivering objections to you. Another thing is, is that a, a lot of what we're talking about here today is prospecting, cold prospecting, reaching out proactively outbound to prospects. And when you do that, you likely, mo you most likely are reaching prospects that are not in buying mode. Uh, you know, if you think about a prospect periodically buying or needing the service you sell, uh, and that's even an, even an, even an optimistic mindset that you sell something in that free f at some recurring time they're going to need what you sell i mean some products that's not even the case either people don't actively look what you sell or they're they don't change that that often all i'm trying to say here is that, is that when you make the call let's if we're selling over the phone or sending an email whatever when the prospect receives your message most likely they're not sitting there you know, searching for the product you sell on, on the internet, looking at pricing and looking at vendors. It's just most likely that's not the case. So those are some of the reasons why they flow up, they throw up the, the, their guard when, they, when you talk to them and they start to give you objections. So if you agree with that understanding of the prospect, and I don't think too far of that is a, too much of that is a stretch, uh, you could say that some of it doesn't, isn't always the case with everybody you talk to, but I think we could probably agree that most of those are pretty safe assumptions. Then one thing that we should do is to try to avoid sounding like a salesperson. We're going to spend most of the time here today talking about how to respond to objections, but you know what? If you do this, then you're going to get a, a lot fewer of objections because if, a, if you minimize how much you sound like a salesperson trying to say, sell something, then you're going to trigger less guardedness and you're going to put the prospect in less of a position where they throw up uh, their, their objection to try to get rid of you. I always kind of go back to looking at the sales process and I think this is really important when you think about how you respond to an objection. So if we just kind of break down the sales process and think about the first time that you reach out to a prospect or speak to them, and this could either be over the phone or it could be in an email or talking to someone at an event, but you have that initial contact. And, you know, for the purposes of today, maybe let's let's just consider that a cold call because that's where, uh, a, or a phone prospecting call, because that's where a lot of these objections we're talking about come up. So you have this initial contact, it's over the phone, it might be two, a two to five minute conversation. From there, you, most likely you're trying to progress the prospect to a larger conversation. In a lot of cases, that might look like an appointment. Um, you, you might call it an appointment. Maybe you don't. Maybe you call it a meeting. Maybe you call it a longer, maybe it's just a longer conversation you have over the phone. But there's in, the way that I see things, in, and sometimes you do this at the same time as the cold call. You know, you just try to have a prospect on the phone for 10 15 minutes on your first call with them that's fine if that's what works best for your product 
but the way I just see this is that those are two separate steps and then the second step is some sort of longer conversation and then a third step might be more of a formal meeting meaning a presentation or it could be a uh, it could be a formal presentation of slides it could be a presentation of a quote or a proposal but I kind of like to break uh, the early part of a sales process into those three stages that's really important and helpful with thinking about how to respond to objections because when you respond to an objection you might want to start to think about what your goal is and let's let's go back to those objection handling responses when you try to overcome an objection so if someone's saying I'm not interested and you're trying to make them interested you're what you're trying to do is more in line with trying to sell the product and I don't necessarily think that your goal should be to try to sell the product in an initial contact. Your real goal in the initial contact is to try to move the prospect to the meeting or to the next step. So if you if you do work with a you know kind of scheduling appointments in, in your in your type of business, your goal should be to set the appointment. And so if someone says I'm not interested, that's not even a valid objection to not have an appointment. Or let, let, let me use a different objection. If someone says I don't have budget right now, that's not a valid that's a valid reason to not buy the product because they don't have budget so they can't buy the product so that's valid but if your goal is not to sell the product if your goal is to sell the meeting then I don't have budget is technically not it it doesn't even connect with what you're trying to accomplish now someone saying my my calendar is completely booked up for the next 18 months that's a valid objection for not having a meeting you know so but anyways, what, what I want to focus on here is, is the goal is to get to the next step, which is to the meeting. And so when you come up against those common objections, keep that in mind. The goal is to get to the meeting. So what we should do is not try to overcome those objections. And, and there's a lot of reasons why in this first step, there's a lot of reasons why you don't try to overcome. It takes time. It's, it's, it's difficult to change someone's mind. It doesn't, it, you just don't even have to try to overcome the objection. But I will say, when you get to that meeting and that appointment maybe you do want to try to overcome an objection so I'm not necessarily saying to never try to overcome objections I mean if someone has an objection and it's a legitimate thing to be for them to be concerned about sometimes you do need to deal with it head-on especially if it means that they're never gonna be able to be fit with your product then you don't want to necessarily spend a lot of time trying to sell to them and waste your valuable time you, but you don't need to identify that before the appointment. Let's get into that in the appointment. So in according to the sales process, let's focus on deflecting till we get to the appointment. Then the, in the appointment, we might deflect the objection or try to overcome it. And then if we get into some sort of formal discussion, then we're, we're primarily only trying to overcome objections. I mean, you know, we need to deal with the prospect's concerns and really uh, address everything. But for the objection responses that I'm going to show you, they align with you kind of agreeing with this. And so you kind of, it can help to kind of have your hands around this or agree with this philosophy in terms of delivering what we're going to recommend you do. The last thing I want to talk about before we get to the responses is your sales pitch. And a lot of times people think of sale, a sales pitch as something that someone says when they're trying to close the sale or when they're delivering a presentation. I believe I see a sales pitch as everything you say when you're talking to prospects. So what I think is, I think that most salespeople deliver more of a product centered, pushy sales pitch. And it looks something like this, like this. This is the company I work for. This is what we sell. This is how it works. This is how it's how you can purchase it and what it costs and every conversation is focused on closing the sale and even if the product is not a one call close and I'll give you an example uh, I had a cold call from a payroll services provider and all of our questions were around are you looking to make a change regarding your payroll provider well that's even knowing uh, it's not a one call close and if I we were to start discussions we would have lots of conversation and steps but her questioning was all around are you looking to do something yes no do you need what we what I sell yes no so the whole pitch is centered around selling the product closing the sale now what we want you to do is have more of a consultative approach so instead of focusing on the product you focus on how the product helps 
You focus on the problems your product helps to resolve. We want you asking good questions. So good questions that you should ask are questions to see if the prospect has the problems that you help to fix. You know, I think that like the question of what keeps you up at night is too broad. It's not a good question. Question, like if you think, if you go to the doctor, your doctor doesn't say, you know, what keeps you up at night or what, what's bothering you, what, what, you know, what, what in general in life are you concerned about or whatever. Your, your doctor will say, does it hurt when I push this? Does it hurt when I do this? Do you, are you experiencing this? And the doctor does that to get to, the, you know, what's going on with you. Well, your questions as a salesperson should be the same. If you have some customer examples, you know, use those in your pitch. If you differ in some sort of way, highlight that. If you can deliver some sort of ROI, highlight that. And the goal of your sales pitch should be starting the conversation and keeping it going, not necessarily closing the sale. So the reason why I bring that up is because your objection responses are part of your sales pitch. And you can use these thoughts and points in your objection responses. That's what I'm gonna do here today. Now, the thing is, is that most salespeople are on the left because the left is easier. You know what you sell, you know where you work, you, and you can talk about that stuff without really putting any thought into it. To really communicate on the right, you kind of have to stop and organize your thoughts. And that takes, that takes you a little bit of time, a little bit of brain power. It requires you to stop selling for uh, a, a minute or two and to organize everything. So, but in order to, to, to help you with delivering the objection responses I'm going to give you, it would help you to kind of organize your thoughts with that. And let me go through uh, an example of how you could organize your thoughts. And I'm going to kind of go through this, which is I'm going to use an example. So if we start with a product and a product that we'll start, we'll use just as an example is web design services. So if we think about the features of that product, Web design services, this company helps to build new websites, make website changes, help with search engine optimization, graphic design work, right? So you remember I said most people have a product selling sales pitch? Those people just stay over here. And I get emails every day from web design companies and they the, the email looks like this. Hey, I, we're, I'm with this company. We do this type of web work and this is how much it costs and whatnot. That's what their email looks like right here essentially. So what what you need to what you can do for this process is start with that, and then brainstorm the benefits that your service offers. So if we look at the benefits of web design, it helps to improve design traffic conversion rates, helps to improve traffic, helps to improve SEO, generates more leads through their website, improves the amount of revenue that a company generates through their website. Those are benefits, right? So that's the value, and just by that alone we're able to communicate more powerfully than if we just talk about the product. And the, the people that email me every day, they, they rarely talk about those things, and that's what they should be talking about. So we also want to think about the problems that you help to fix. And I'm sure if we had a whiteboard, you could probably throw a couple pain points at me. But one thing that you can do is look at the benefits that you offer, and for each benefit, then there can be a corresponding pain point for each benefit. I mean, it's not to say, that's just a, 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 a tactic you can use to develop a list of pain points. You could probably think of some pain points on your own, but that's just one process you can go through. And then what we want to do is we want to think of questions to ask. And so you might say, yeah, I agree with you. I should be asking better, more questions or better questions, but I don't know what questions to ask. Well, look at the pain points that you fix. And so here are the pain points for, for uh, that a web design company might help a, a small business with. And then for each of those pain points could be a question could actually could be probably more than one question for each pain point. But if we're just kind of doing one for one, we kind of go through this process and we came up with six benefits that led us to six pain points and that led us to six qualifying questions. Now you don't have to do six. I would say at a minimum you want to do probably three and you could probably do up, you know, more than six, you could do 10. But one thing I want to point out is that if you go through that process, and we're, we're here talking about objections, right? But if you go through that process, then you can have your value proposition and you can have your list of questions to ask and you can have some common pain examples. And if you add to that, you know, your company and product info, and then you put around that sort of an introduction and a close, you know, language, 
then you essentially have a, a call script that you can use for a consultative selling cold calling conversation. That's not what we're here today to talk about. We definitely help you with that, and we have other, other webinars on that. But what I want to point out is, remember I said we're deflecting. We're the karate guy that's pushing the, the kick away and the hit away. Well, I'm going to go through a bunch of res objection responses here, and it – if you didn't weren't don't really pay attention it's gonna look like I'm giving you a lot of addition a lot of different things to memorize and learn but the reality is is that when you get an objection you can deflect back to these different sections of your script so what you need to do first is sort of organize your sales pitch and that will give you a script and then when you learn about this objection handling methodology you don't have to learn a bunch of objection responses you just need to learn where to deflect back to in your script when you get those.